Hey y'all, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be me answering the questions that you guys asked me on Instagram and on Snapchat. So I got a ton of you guys' questions here with me. I'm gonna just scroll randomly and try to find questions to answer. I'm sorry if I don't answer your question in this video. Let me know if you guys want me to do a part two of this to answer the other questions that are left off because at this point I have like 91 comments on <laughs> on Instagram alone. That's not even the Snapchat questions that I got. So I'm going to be picking and choosing these randomly like I said. But let me know if you guys want another video because I can totally do that answering the questions that don't make it to this video. So the first question that I got was from Bennett Lala on Instagram. And she asked, hey, where do you see yourself in the next five years? So that is a wonderful question. I'd like to know the answer as well. <laughs> um, I don't know where I'll be in five years. I am kind of out of the mindset of trying to plan everything in my life. As you guys know from previous videos that I've done where I've explained my story a little bit, um, my world has kind of shifted dramatically from year to year in the past four or five years. So it's just like a roller coaster to me now. And I'm just in a place where I just hope that I am still doing what I love in five years, whatever that may be or transform itself into being. I believe that I'm here on earth to connect with people, to bridge gaps, to help people feel better about themselves and about the world and um, you know, motivating and encouraging women. Like that's my main goal and I believe that that is my purpose. So as long as I'm serving that purpose, I don't care how I'm doing it. <laughs> I just know that God is gonna put me in a position to do that some way, shape, or form. So I pray that I am doing that um, in five years. I also hope that in five years, I am still loving what I do. Like, to love what you do is such a precious thing and work doesn't feel like work, you know? And I hope that I'm in a position to continue to do that in five years. Also on a personal tip, in five years, I really hope to be uh, married with kids. Like, I know that that's kind of a, you know, that's kind of putting a timeline on life, but I'm just saying that I hope by that time I'm at that place, um, but, that's, you know, you know, if the universe calls it, if God calls it to be, then it will be. But that's something that, you know, I hope for myself in five years. Shoot, in five years, I'm going to be 30. So I hope that by 30, I am, you know, starting a family and like getting, getting on to that chapter of my life. Nita Hendricks underscore asks, do you ever think you will cut your hair really short, like a curly pixie cut? Okay, so y'all, I really wanted to cut my hair off like last December. Oh my gosh, like I was even talking to my stylist about it like, yo, I really wanna cut my hair off, I wanna start new, I wanna like take my audience with me through that new like world of like cutting your hair and growing it back out and blah, 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 blah. But then, you know, she kind of talked me out of it because it was coming honestly from a place of me being really frustrated with my hair. I had colored it a lot last year and it just wasn't doing what I was used to it doing. And so I was getting really frustrated and I didn't really like it at that time. And then I was also kind of overwhelmed with lipstick and curls, to be honest. I almost quit lipstick and curls last year, um, which is kind of crazy to think about now because like this is this is my life um but and my business but a year ago i said december 31st or whatever um 2015 like lipstick and curls is done and it was because there was a lot of things in the background going on that was stressing me out and i was just like you know i was ready to cut the cord and let it go honestly but you know I, I suck it out and you know a couple months later literally landed my Colgate commercial and uh, literally a month later I got with my new manager and everything has just been uphill from there so I feel like I was gonna cut my hair to like make myself feel better more than anything else and I'm glad I did it because <laughs> uh, I wouldn't be doing a lot of the things that I'm doing now if my hair was super super short um, to be honest and so I'm glad I didn't do it but I used to always say that when I turned 30 I would cut my hair off but that was before lipstick and curls and now I feel like 
I'm not gonna cut my hair off anytime soon. I mean, I I'm gonna grow it out before I cut my hair. But I do feel envy because like my sister has had a pixie cut before and I see her with it and it's so cute on her. And I guess that's, you know, one of the perks of being a twin is like whatever hairstyle she does, like I know what I'll look like with it. And so um, I know what I'll look like with a pixie cut, but I think it'd be like one of those things where I would like do it and then regret it like three weeks later. My inner mirror on Instagram asked, when you first started YouTube, what was your goal? And now that your year's in, have, have your goals changed? If so, what are the new goals you've set for yourself and your platform? So when I first started YouTube, my goal was just to help other girls that had hair like me get through life. <laughs> Literally, like that's what I, that's what I wanted to do and that's why I started uploading videos and you know, I continue to do that off and on here and there. Um, I've always maintained like a social media status, but I didn't really turn lipstick and curls into a business until like two and a half, three years ago. And that's when I started to really see that, wow, people really care what I think and how I do my hair and brands want to work with me and they want to pay me. Like what the heck? Like this is so weird. Mind you, you know, a few years ago, I, getting paid to do YouTube was not what it is today at all as most people know I was embarrassed to say that I was a youtuber back in the day like because it was so different and weird like I felt like people didn't understand what that meant um, and a lot of people still don't understand what it means to be a youtuber or an influencer or whatever you want to call yourself uh, which is you know it makes sense because it's a very new profession um, and so since taking my brand lipstick and curls to the next level of where we are now for me my goals in the future are to continue to expand to eventually go beyond YouTube and social media but to do more like traditional media so being on television and doing you know live hosting and stuff like that that's what I inevitably want to be doing but I am totally open to however God takes me through life you know I appreciate every opportunity that I have under the veil of lipstick and curls but I really believe that the core of my brand is just me you know it's just Jade and being Jade and being my own person and sharing myself with the world however that may be so I don't necessarily always want to be super hair related because there's so much more to me than just hair I want to do more things that are aligned with like my educational background and my interests in social justice and um, building self-esteem and confidence and just stuff like that and I can do that in a lot of different ways so I just hope that you know, my goal at least is to continue to do those things and be able to exercise my creativity in different ways, uh, you know, beyond just YouTube and social media, but doing like bigger and better things. Danny did it underscore asked, is it difficult maintaining the image of Christ in the YouTube world? P.S. Love you, Jade. I see the God in you. Oh, thanks, girl. So honestly, for me, it isn't uh, because I feel like I just live my life and have my own values and I love first before anything else and I understand that there's a lot of different ways to live life on this earth and I am tolerant of all those ways. I am a lover beyond anything else and I'm super accepting of other people and so I don't feel like people don't accept me because of who I am. I'm not super preachy, I'm not bringing up God every two seconds. I'm I'm not somebody who's forcing religion or faith down anybody's throat by no means I just am who I am and I have the values that I have and that's it and honestly I don't feel weird about that in the YouTube world or in regular life at all like I am who I am you know so I feel like if anything YouTube allows you to be more of yourself because everybody on here is kind of doing their own thing and being their own people or person and I think that that's a beautiful thing you know to have and to have a sense of community on YouTube where you really can be whoever you want and you're gonna find other people that are like you when you may not have people like you in your own like immediate environment so I think that if anything my faith and the way that I express myself and my values I 
cater towards other women and other people who also hold those same values but also people who don't like by all means i don't believe that my audience has a specific demographic and is a specific type of person no i am multifaceted i am you know completely all over the place so i know that there are other people out there that are also kind of like like to do a little bit of this like to do a little bit of that and that's who i am too so some days i like to be very conservative and very like well put together and other days you know i just let loose and be who i am and and not as polished and not as politically correct and all that you know so i i want to be able to like express that I am, you know, a believer, but I'm also not perfect and I'm not here trying to be. Madame Chantel asked, how are you balancing Oregon and your other travels? Have you decided on a visiting schedule? P.S. Love you so much. Hey girl, love you too. So basically with my traveling to Oregon back and forth, if you guys don't know, my boyfriend just recently moved to Oregon and I spend a lot of time up there and here in Dallas. And so right now I haven't had to travel for work in the last month or so, which has been really nice. And so I've just been going back and forth from there. But as far as like a schedule, right now I'm kind of of working off of one or two weeks in Oregon and one or two weeks in Dallas if anything I spend more time in Dallas than I do in Oregon because obviously like I have all my stuff here in Dallas all my equipment and everything but as far as being able to function when I'm in Oregon I bought a ring light for up there I bought you know I keep certain things up there I brought a lot of like hair products and stuff with me um, up there so that if I do and when I do film videos and everything when I'm there I have everything that I need and I can completely stay on schedule with uh, content that I'm giving to you guys or content that I'm doing for brands and whatnot like but because of my schedule is kind of all over the place from the beginning I really don't have anything structured right now to where I have to be somewhere once a week or what I don't have anything like that right now which is nice because I can be really flexible with my schedule it's just a matter of really planning out you know when am I gonna do this when am I gonna do that and being prepared so if I know that I'm gonna be gone for two weeks in Oregon I need to make sure I have everything that I need to do the work that I need to do when I'm in Oregon, I have to bring all that stuff with me. So it's just a matter of being prepared and adjusting to like that, like, you know, traveling lifestyle. Makeup Bear 33 asked, what do you think, how do you feel about friends with benefits relationships? I also like to call these situationships. I also like to call these cuddle buddies. Um, to be honest, y'all, I think that your situation is your situation. Everything is subjective and everything is based on how you view yourself and how you view other people and how you like to be loved and like all that kind of stuff. I'm not one to say like don't entertain friends with benefit relationships, don't do this, don't do that because you know what? I did it, all right? I had a few, man, not a few, well, man, yes, I had a few <laughs> in my lifetime friends with benefit situations and honestly they come with a lot of BS to be honest it's a lot of you getting your feelings involved and not feeling that feeling reciprocated like the end of friends with benefit situations more often not end with one person being super hurt and the other person being able to just like walk away and live their life which is super unfair when you're talking about love and giving and receiving love like that is not a good feeling okay it's not a good feeling at all and so i think that everybody has to learn on their own I think that for me, I had to go through friendships with benefits to realize how they were not good for me. I'm a person that I have to go through things to really understand the impact of them. And so I can't say that they were in vain though, because I learned a lot from those situations, um, dealing with those people and you know, it is what it is. But I think that if you are looking for something more serious, then you have to make that known and you have to have self discipline to be able to say, you you know what yeah he's treating me like his girlfriend and he you know we spent a lot of time together but he doesn't want a commitment and what does that mean for me as a person and what does that say about how he feels about me how he respects me as a woman and all of that because I think that you know 
I think a lot of women and girls stay in situationships and friends with benefits situations because there's that hope that things will become, you know, a real relationship one day or they, uh, you know, we try to pretend that like all we want is friends with benefits, but we are emotional beings. So if you really like somebody more than often than not, you're going to fall for them. You're going to have feelings for them. And men are not as emotional as us. So they will have an easier time of letting you go and having something else on the side or whatever. There's just a lot of unpredictability when it comes to friends with benefits. And you also, if you are intimate with somebody who is a friends with benefits person, obviously the benefits part, it's really important that you protect yourself, okay? The best form of protection is abstinence. But you know, we live in a day and age where a lot of people practice casual sex and that's fine. But you have to protect yourself. You cannot be naive and think, oh, the worst thing that can happen is that I get pregnant. No, that's not the worst thing that can happen to you, okay? A lot of other things can happen and I have gone through a lot of different situations where, yeah, I dealt with things that I did not wanna deal with but I put myself in positions where I trusted somebody and they weren't really doing the right thing on the other end. You know what I'm saying? If that even makes sense. I don't know if that makes sense, but protect yourself, okay? Getting tested, wearing condoms, being on birth control, all those things. But especially if you are having casual sex, wear a condom. Seriously. Like, it's not like a baby can be one thing, but you getting an STI or, you know, anything worse is something that you want to avoid you know what i'm saying so do that unique beauty asked so i am interested in possibly doing vlogging slash blogging for beginners and curl care about live salsa dancing but i have no idea where to start i love your journey and you inspire so many of us to follow in your footsteps where do i start okay hey girl i remember meeting you at naspa like what was that two years ago three years ago how you doing? Hope you're doing well. Um, as far as starting out blogging and all that kind of stuff, it sounds like you have a lot of interests, obviously in hair and uh, lifestyle and dancing. And for me, I think the best advice I would give is, is start doing a little bit of all those things and see what content really bites. A lot of people start doing one thing and then they have curly hair and then everybody asks questions about their hair and not about the thing that they're actually doing in their video. You know, then you know, okay, people wanna see this type of content from me. They wanna see curly hair videos or whatever. What I would say, you kinda have to, in a way, finesse your audience to be interested in what you have to offer. Because the thing is, like, people don't know what they want until you show them what they want. And so if you can grab people by doing curly hair videos or by doing dancing videos, but then you can start, like, slowly bringing in other types of content that, you know, people who follow you and love you will be like, oh, wow, this is something interesting I never really thought about. Let me watch this video really quick. And you could be introducing something totally new to your fans and your audience so I think that you know do a little bit of the things that you're interested in kind of like gauge how people like your your content and then go from there then you can decide okay do I want to do I want to do more of this type of video or that type of video or blogging posting whatever it is but just start putting content out there and see what gets the most attention Misha underscore LaRue asked the equipment you use for filming and if you don't mind talking about YouTube and women of, women of color and how to start a, a YouTube lipstick and curls love you. Thanks girl. So um, the equipment that I use is a Nikon D5500 camera with a lens. I can't remember what lens this is but I will... Uh, I'll put it down below what specific lens this is. This is not the kit lens, this is a lens that I bought separately. And um, I'm using a ring light just right now to film, but I have like soft boxes and umbrella lights and all that. I find personally, I like a ring light like this or just natural light best, which does require me to like catch the light at the right times of the day and stuff like that. But you know, I just prefer that look um, for me, but you know, a lot of YouTubers have videos and stuff all about the equipment that they use and all that. I just kind of like keep it simple and kind of keep it to my ring light or natural light in that sense. Um, as far as women of color and how to start a YouTube, 
those are like really big topics um so i think that the previous question could kind of answer um you know how to start and then also i have a video about how to kind of start um thinking about being on social media as a business and youtube and i'll link it here for you guys so you can go click that if you like or this side whatever the card thing that pops up the little eye that's where um <laughs> that's where the video will be so you can go click that and watch that and i give all my advice on how to start a youtube Ah, there's so many questions <laughs> and I want to answer all of them, but I can't because I don't want this video to be like an hour long. No underscore games 22 asked, I followed your Instagram since you were in college and I have seen your transformation with your curls. I absolutely love your hair and I'm trying to follow your deep conditioning routines, but I'm getting discouraged because I'm not seeing results. How long did it take you to fully revive your curls? P.S. My curls are fried. I'm constantly straightening my hair. Oh, so that's why you might see the results because you're constantly straightening your hair. You gotta cut the heat out, you know? I think that deep conditioning once a week and doing it for a month or two months consistently, well, you should start seeing results if you're doing it regularly. But if you are still straightening your hair constantly, you're not gonna see results. You're still damaging your hair. So whether you are deep conditioning once a week or not you're still like counteracting that with the heat so i would suggest to revive your curls put the flat iron down for a while and i'm not saying you can never flat iron your hair because when i first started you know wearing my hair curly i stopped using heat for like two months and then i strained my hair and then i went again and then i kind of got on the cycle of only straightening my hair if i did once a month and once i started wearing my hair curly more i just stopped straightening my hair completely and even now i'll maybe straighten it here and there whenever but because i do it so like so infrequently when i want to straighten my hair i do and then you know i'm good because i know that i've been taking care of my hair prior to that and i will continue after that so i mean i think it's balanced but you also have to know like hey you gotta put the flat iron down you gotta give your hair a break and a chance to actually revive it oh i got a question from symphony my sis if you guys don't follow symphony soto you totally should that's my girl she's super funny super goofy and has a voice of an angel so if you like music videos and like uh, beauty videos she has all of that on her channel um, but her question was what is your biggest goal for 2017 love you love you uh, so I think for 2017 my biggest goal is to challenge myself to do more than I'm doing right now so you guys already know I do a lot I am on multiple campaigns with different brands i do a lot of content i film videos for you guys all the time i'm always chatting and talking with you guys on instagram and snapchat and twitter and all that stuff but i really want to start doing things outside of my comfort zone which i hate but love at the same time i want to try new things i want to just continue to expand myself beyond what I can see for myself right now. Um, one goal that I will share with you guys for 2017 though is that I change my lifestyle as far as being more healthy and fit and really incorporating that into my world as a normal thing and not just something that I do for a few months and then let go and then go back again and then let go and then go back again. You know, I really want to be somebody that not only takes my hair health seriously, but my own physical health seriously, my mental health seriously. So that's a really big goal of mine that I'm working on right now, instilling some habits and healthy things that I'm doing that will carry over into 2017 and progress and get better for the rest of my life because right now I feel like at 25 going on 26 I need to establish these healthy habits now so that when I am 35 40 or whatever it may be I'm not struggling to get my life together because I'm having certain ailments or certain um diseases or whatever you know my mother did have breast cancer at a younger age of like 45 i think she was when she first got diagnosed which is pretty young um it, i think it's still pretty young but anyway um she had it really heavy really strong case of breast cancer as well as my grandmother on my dad's side has also had breast cancer so for me i'm really trying to get my health together now so that you know 
later on down the line I'm not subjecting myself to enhancing the chances of me getting cancer than you know I could if I was eating better and stuff like that so that's really for me something that has been heavy on my heart and on my mind lately and I think that people should really take that seriously I know there's pockets of people in the world that do really take that seriously but I'm trying to you know get to a point where I can also spread that type of content and that type of positivity and that message to you guys as well like how to be healthy how to be happy and how to take care of yourself because I feel like when you're young you don't think that that type of stuff is going to happen to you you don't think that you know you're ever going to not be healthy and not be this you kind of feel invincible and that is not the case there are so many things that can happen to us to our bodies things that are happening in our bodies that we don't even know about and so I want to kind of make that something that I really focus on in 2017 and try to get better about so yeah but I'm done answering the questions for now there's so many more so let me know down below if there's a specific topic or a question that you asked me on there that didn't get answered in this video let me know I will do a part two if need be um, or I'll try to answer you guys' questions as much as possible down below but until next time you guys I love y'all thank you guys so much for being here staying with me supporting me i love y'all i thank y'all i got some bomb stuff coming up for you guys um so stay tuned and until next time i'll talk to you later bye